All right. Welcome back to another episode of the Two Wheeled Rider podcast. After dark, I think that's what we're calling after it. After hours. After, after hours. Dark, what, what, whatever it's called. I already forgot to hit the record button on this one. So today is January 16th. We literally just finished watching the first round of Supercross. I am joined in studio, sitting across from me, Jake Ross. Next to me, Luke Ross and adjacent Noah Orsini, the shortest man at the table tonight. Yeah. On the phone, I have my normal host, Brian Boyer. We are also joined by a special guest tonight, a guy that I think still has his uh, pro motocross card, Johnny Hopper. So, uh, welcome, guys. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, listen, Brian, you're only like 45 still minutes here, away. Still awake, you know. It's way past my bedtime, but I'll give Hopper the benefit of the doubt. He's out in Arizona right now. I understand. We don't have the budget to fly him in. I, I could have covered your gas money to get you here tonight. <laughs> in any event, so. Hey, do you guys know? Go for it, Mario. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to go completely off topic and be like, have you guys ever used gas to clean your air filter? I use uh, I use kerosene, but in an Wait, emergency, there's something I've used else gas. you use. I, I knew Brian was going to say all that. I, that's all Brian uses. Gas. That's all oh. I use. Man, that can be rough on him. I <laughs> I usually use kerosene and then just wash it out with some Dawn soap. Works like a champ. <laughs> I'm just tired of having a dirty air filter, and I don't have a mechanic anymore. So, you know, there's a first time for everything, and I'm like, holy shit, this stuff works really well. It's a little more <laughs> mellow. Actually, most of my arguments have been whether I use 87 or 93 to clean my air filter. <laughs> I, personally. And for 87. But I'd you know, go, uh, people argue with the 93. I'd go with race gas. It probably... Uh, so, BP is... Uh, that's what I'm using, you know, so it's, it's not very cost-effective, but... <laughs> yeah, but it works. It's, it's got actually, a lot of detergents so, in it. Yeah, plus it has the hazardous label on there, so you really know it does the job. Yeah, definitely like some MR Pro 6 or MR XO2. Since it's after hours, I'm going to tell a very sneak tip. So, I, bought, I went to Harbor Freight. I got a little pump. I go over to my neighbor. I suck out their 87 gas. I clean my air filter. Super cost efficient. Um, you know, and I think my sponsor on the podium, you know, my neighbor, um, every time, you know, I feel like gas. So I feel like it's uh, worthwhile and uh, everyone's yeah, benefiting. It's super cost efficient until you have to spend that nice uh, couple grand engine job bill. Or just that night in jail and somebody's got to bail you out. So. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> Hopper, I watched your latest video. You were talking about some guy that some other podcast out there, uh, Steve. Ma I don't know how to spell the last Mathis. Yeah, Mathis. Ma Mathis. I, I think it's something. Luke Never heard of it. I, I listened to it. <laughs> apparently, apparently the YouTube the uh, YouTube algorithm hasn't either. So, as you kindly pointed out. Oh, I was kind of making fun of some other people. So. No, I, I, That's kind of what I do. I yeah. thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And and for those of you that aren't aware, because it's been a while since we've done one of these after hours podcasts, these aren't well polished ones. That and not that the regular ones are scripted, but we have questions and things. There's nothing prepared for this. It's literally six guys, well, five and a half guys, because Noah's here, talking about Supercross tonight, and we're kind of on a high of. We haven't seen Supercross in a long time. We haven't seen motocross in quite a while. And that was exciting to watch tonight. And we're going to, I'm not going to say we're going to break down the 250 and 450 race, but we're at least going to talk about it a little no, bit. No, we're fresh out of it. I'm going to react to it, you know, kind of say what we thought about it. And yeah, we're fresh. Like it just finished, what, 20 minutes ago? Uh, if that. So my heart was racing. No. So, that so are we talking race. about, just to throw it out there, are we talking about Supercross or is this like, I feel like we're closing in on the bet championship. So that when we dive into this, aren't both winners closing in on 30? Dude, I was kind of thinking that same thing. Everybody was complaining. Like, I, Tyler's over there. He's 32 years old. Mario's pushing 40. And I was like, dude, these guys aren't much younger than you Yeah, guys. Brayton was in the top 10 tonight. And he's yeah, Brayton got like what? sixth. I was like, Almost Mario, that could 37. be your little brother. Dude, and that was on like a, a privateer effort too with, oh, with yeah. Brayton. Yeah, it wasn't even full and, factory. I mean, and at and, the other end of the spectrum, though, Max Volan rode pretty well tonight. I mean, all things considered, rookie season, first pro race, and he's out there running running the pace. What, what did Tyler say? I can't when, believe that. Oh, sorry, Johnny, go ahead. No, I'm, I'm interrupting on you guys. It, it, since I'm not in the studio, it, it's No, it's a little tougher. To we so can't I see each other. Guys. I get it. No, go ahead. Go ahead and finish your thought. 
Um, I just can't believe that factory TPM didn't put him in the freaking West Coast, give him a, a little bit more time to, you know, practice on, on a Supercross track. Yeah, they were talking about putting him on the West Coast for the longest time. But, yeah, I was really surprised they threw him, like, head first into the deep end, you know? So, c- coming into tonight's race, I mean, there was qualifying, obviously, before the show tonight for the uh, – I know what Brian's doing right now. He's walking outside because he's got a yeah. You got like eighty million kids you got to take care of running around there. No, I know. No, my kids are in bed. I know. I'm on mute. I'm down here drinking my drink. Okay, all right. (laughs) So cheers, me too, brother. Me too, brother. I don't remember. I remember Christian Craig for the two fifty won. You know his his heat race. Who who won? Uh, On a cheater bike. What? Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. dude. Those Yamaha. They're on another level. I mean, you just look at the top three. You had you had two Yamahas in the top three tonight. Um, Hampshire. I just think it's funny that can, can we touch on that? I feel like Hopper has some good insight there. So yeah, I get the Peter bike topic on the outdoors. Hopper's popped up on my but YouTube algorithm. That? I I very much respect his "don't give a shit" attitude. It's very I <laughs> can always appreciate somebody who gives zero fucks about what everybody's going to think about. No, but I feel like I love that. that's going to be some good insight here is so obviously starts are important in Supercross. I get the Peter bike, but how much does that bike differ in? and is it suspension? What is the real difference in Supercross? I get it photo. Um but maybe we touch on that on Supercross. I think that uh at at the top level there, I mean with those the, the factory built engines the power difference, I know that Yamaha is quick. I, I've ridden even a stock one, and, and they're just so quick off the bottom. And uh, I even listened to Christian Craig speak a little bit about the Yamaha, and I don't think he said the in, power In between difference. the tears. In between the tears. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think the power difference was uh, was too much between that and uh, not, Honda. Not to interrupt, but Mario, what, what was Christian getting tonight? I said, Christian's heading back to the camper. He's getting some tonight. <laughs> He's getting some. Oh, yeah. With his whopping uh, 2500 bucks for winning the, the race. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude. Dude, you know he's got to have some sort of bonus being on the factory team. He's, he's not a privateer. He's got to have some. No, they, they, they do. Like, I'm I'm pretty sure that Barsha walked away with two fifty dollars um, with his bonus contract from Gas Gas. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he had a pretty high bonus signing for – for if he wins the races. So, so Johnny, what do you think the difference is between the factory Yamahas and, you know, maybe some of the factory support Yamaha 250s out there on the line? What what type of differences are we looking at top to bottom between the bikes? Um, I would really say power delivery. Uh, it's the throttle body and it's the air box and it's the ECU. You know, so, like, everyone wants to talk about, like, just sheer on drag speed horsepower and you know you can build a bike that'll blow up by the time you get to the first corner but whether or not you can hold on to it and if it's going to give you arm pump for 20 minutes you know so the the real differential is is that power delivery that they they make usable strong gradual power based on what the rider wants and with those yamahas in the 250 class dude they're just they're just a little bit better everywhere and if you talk to any of the other factory guys or anybody in the pits, they all know it. And it, it's just, it's a huge coincidence that uh, Craig um, was getting taken out by these things, you know, a year ago and would be up front, but he wouldn't win races. And now that he's got the bike, you know, he's pretty much, I I don't want to, if I was a betting man, you know, I'd bet some Bitcoin that he's going to uh, win, win the championship. Oh, you're going that high. Oh yeah, yeah. I I I think he's got AC or Austin Forkner's um, number pretty much all year for his eight races for this East West funny season, and a little more experience. I feel like I feel like Forkner's a little like, more. The I guy's been racing two fifty since they were first invented. Yeah, I mean he was on the, the dude. He's TLE he's the Mike Honda. Brown of two fifty. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so. You know, Johnny, you bring that up and you say Craig's probably the, you know, he's at least your favorite to win it. As I look down through the list of competitors for, I guess this was a, was this, they count this as an East Coast round? Yeah. yeah, yeah. East, first first seven year, or eight yeah. or whatever, East Coast rounds. 
It should have been a West Coast, but yeah, I'm, I, we don't have to get into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to the second Orlando round. It's a West Coast, and the first Orlando round's an East Coast, and it's it's what it is. But looking at the list of competitors, I feel bad for the privateers. Oh yeah, for sure. Especially if somebody's actually located but, but on sorry, the West Mario. Coast. No, no, you're good. You know, I'm just looking at the list of competitors. I mean, we all know Jet Lawrence has all-out raw speed. We we didn't see a whole lot of that tonight. He ended up finishing sixth. Hampshire looked good early on in fifth. Uh, Joe Shimoda in, in fourth. Nichols third. I mean, I know Nichols had the red number plate for a while last year, but he was kind of slowly losing that as the season went on. It really comes down, in my mind, to probably Forkner and Craig. And if I had to put money on one, I haven't seen Craig – choke a championship away he, he hasn't you know i don't think he's had the equipment unless someone really. takes him out. yeah unless someone but i <laughs> but i've seen yeah i've yeah the last year um i've seen no, Fortner French, be out in the lead and and lose it so i'm i'm kind of with you looking at this lineup I, if i got to put my money on somebody i'm probably putting it on craig any disagreement from around the table what, nah, what i think it's going to be those two i uh, mean all year I mean, well, Forkner always you, you look at, throws uh, his emotions away. M- Mitch Payton. Mitch Payton used to be the the one all be all team. You know, it was so high that he was only paying his riders like twenty five grand to to ride their bike, and people would sign up for it willingly because they're like, "Dude, this is uh, how I jump start my career." Um, but with that came a lot of pressure to where if you didn't make it, well then nobody else is going to hire you. And now with the, the Yamaha kind of taking a, a different turn where Mitch Payton is kind of trying to play catch up with his riders. And then, yeah, I think uh, the Aussie Jet Lawrence, I mean, he's basically the new Chad Reed. Everyone is saying he's the great hope for Australia, which I don't disagree with. I think Factory Honda told him, hey, you need to cool your heels so you don't wad out front. And so he seemed like he wasn't trying to set the world on fire. But then, you know, as soon as he kind of had some pressure and got passed, we all saw how it ended for him. You know, he kind of went back to the old Jet Lawrence and um, ended up on the ground on the last lap. Like, if I was the team manager, I'd probably be ripping him a new one to be like, what were you doing? You know, you were like three, four seconds from uh, the podium on the last lap. Why did you throw it away? Now you finished six. Like, dude, this was last year kind of a thing. Yeah, and that's where I wasn't as hyped up with him as a championship this year just because of those types of mistakes and stuff. Sophomore slump? Mm-hmm. Yep. Third year seems to be the strive. Joe Shimoda, I thought, came out strong. I would agree, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I was really I don't think he deserved the Mitch Payton ride, but... Um, no, nah, that was questionable, too. I think it's got a lot to do with some of his connections uh, back home, but, you know, that's... that's Where's this Kawasaki a made again? Year with... <laughs> I'm just I'm just looking here. I'm just trying to figure it out. I, I I don't know what connection you're talking about, Johnny. Yeah. No, he's got those inside connections. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brian, what were you gonna say? No, I guess kind of touching on that though. I feel like times have changed with our, our riders and obviously Johnny brought up a good point with um Pro Circuit. They they were the team everyone wanted to be on regardless of what the contract looks like. But is there any weight now that held with social media presence? So obviously you got to be fast, you got to be a good rider. But is there anything that carries along, like maybe it's Jet Lawrence's kind of uh, personality or the the charisma that he has. Does that change how things used to be now that people are focused on how many followers or what your social media presence is? Oh, I think 1,000%. Like, look at Deegan. Deegan, when he's coming up to a factory team, I bet everyone is going to want his social media presence because, unfortunately, this is a, a huge, dying sport that, that's small. And uh, with Deegan comes a bunch of outside money and sponsors. So that's going to be, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that kid's going to get a, a pretty decent pick of the, the barrel, not only because he's pretty much the fastest kid coming up, but mainly because of uh, what he brings to the table as well. Yeah, that was well, a good I'm sure oh, sorry. I was going to say, I'm not in Maryland right now, there. Brian, but I feel like you have show notes prepped, and the rest of us are just running running with scissors right now. We got nothing prepped. No, obviously, I've just had a lot less 
drink than you are. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brian, to touch on that, though, an, another person like that that is, is in the same situation would be like Seven Deuce Deuce, Adam Entignap. I mean, there's no way he would be on a team without his social media presence. I mean, he's such a marketable well, person. Well, with between his him and Twisted T's markability right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's the perfect fit for that team. <laughs> yeah, but it, I'm going to take this from the perspective because I lately I haven't been using any social media. So when I'm not seeing those guys' personalities showing as much and I'm more focused on their actual riding, I, I don't really I, – I, what I'm trying to say is I wasn't thinking about who was behind the helmet as much tonight. I mean, when I saw Jet Lawrence ride tonight, I wasn't really thinking of that, like, funny, witty Australian kid. I was more thinking of, like, man, that kid's kind of riding like a jerk tonight. Like, but, he's But he's to be fair, it. in the 250 class, you're you not, may not you're have not been. Been as but, <laughs> but in the 450 class, we all sat around and talked about how Barsha already won A1 of 2021, <laughs> even though it never happened. Yeah, and I'm sitting here like, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> he, he, he already won the first race. Any, so before we jump onto the 450 class, which is I think what we all want, all really want to talk about. Oh yeah. Um, anything else on the 250 class you guys want to touch on? Um, no, you haven't said anything. You're just taking up space over there. Anything you want to you want to touch on? Well, I mean, the thing about Forkner is it's just he's a good rider. He's a he's a great rider, but he throws everything away, and he's got a it's his men it's his inside of his brain it's not as it's, it's like his per, his, his personality he, he might not be are you trying to say like he's not as strong willed as some of the other guys like he's a head case or what like yeah i mean he's not he's not very really strong mentally physically yeah. sure he's pretty strong i mean a lot of people say too that i mean that's three quarters of the battle is being mentally strong i know when i go out there to race i mean if you psych yourself out on the starting line about the other guys around you i mean you're, you're, already lost the race is already yeah, over yeah hey no the real question i have for you is what do you think about his chick wait didn't she lose she's hot see, I, I heard some they got back together oh i i, I, I heard it's it. like one so, of those so like while, hot and cold things while jake ross doesn't follow any the social media girl. luke ross is on top of all of it he knows what all the riders are doing they <laughs> jerk with me as the industry insider yeah, because we, i just listen to podcasts oh, he listens to so many podcasts and anytime he brings something up he acts like it's just common knowledge and we clearly know he heard it from this week's podcast here or there. And uh, joke at he's the uh, the industry insider. Always got the, the good insight. Hopper well, would be talking shit on me because I get most of it from Pulp and Max. All right, so Luke just showed me a picture. <laughs> no, of, no, dude. Go ahead, Johnny. Uh, sorry, guys. I, I don't mean to interrupt you. No, um, you're good, man. It's it's tough. It's tough. We get it. But but we're it's making it work. Yeah, not nothing about uh nothing bad about mathis i just can't stand five hours of, of listening to this stuff i mean you know there's other stuff going on but you guys make up a good point as far as the headspace and i think that's why christian craig is going to win because he's already in forkner's head and you know i think that's a, a big deal but what do you guys think about him crying after uh after the race you know him saying that there were so many people against him do you think this is the, the PED whole thing haunting him that he feels like he got that off his back? Or, you know, I what think, do you, I, I thought it was, I, I liked him. I thought it was complete BS. Yeah, like, he's got more people on his side to get a ride at that age on a 250. I'm not saying this didn't deserve it, but come on. Like, you don't got people against you. You got a lot of people for you. You got a lot of people behind you. That's why you got that ride. Part of it was resolved, part of it was your brand. Yeah, I, I found I it. I, I found it odd. Um, first off, the fact you're even acknowledging anyone out there doesn't like you. I, I've always had a problem with because it's almost like you're making yourself seem more important than you actually are. The other part of it is when he went through that whole I don't know if you want to call it a band suspension. It never actually happened. I think most people were on his side, being like, at least in my case, I was like, yeah, I want to see the best riders. Out on, out on the best equipment to make for the best show. So I was happy he didn't have to sit out. I, no, those I don't FIM remember a bunch of protesters out there, you know, outside of A1 going, he shouldn't be racing or wherever he started out at last year. Like, I, Martin, I don't know where this so came are from. Are you with the consensus? 
Sorry, again, I'm, I'm interrupting. So, Mario, are you with the consensus that um, nobody cheats? I'm not. I am. Uh, <laughs> so, so my opinion on this may, may be different from others. Um, I don't think anyone should be out there racing under the influence for safety purposes. I personally, as however you want to put this, don't get caught. Um, if it if it makes for a better show. I'm all for it. And if that means you're taking something that allows you to recover faster, you're taking something that allows you to ride at a faster pace longer, be a little bit stronger, and against the rules, not against the rules, don't get caught, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. I'm not Obviously, you know it exists out there. I mean, we, we saw Lance Armstrong win seven Tour de France's. That was fun to watch. How many people have watched the Tour de France since then? Not near as many that were watching it then. I think sports is entertainment. Agreed. Um, I get that that is a, a disadvantage for lesser funded teams, be they satellite teams or or privateer teams. When I flip on the TV for three hours on a Saturday night, or in this case, you know, Tuesday nights or whatever we're doing, I want to see the best show. So I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Well, the the industry is is all about it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. But we can move on. Um, I, you right before you guys move on to 450s. Did you guys see those that wheel tap after the whoop section? Guys were going um, double, triple on, and then kind of like jump off wheel tap. Uh, I know I saw Lawrence do it. RJ did it. Um, Craig did it, and it just it looked really, really sketchy. Yeah, <laughs> it looked that like was those scary. guys were half the time going to crash in the heat race. I yeah. think Forkner almost crashed trying to do it. He did like a a nice tire tap off of something and it kind of sent him a little squirrely either his back end kicked out a little or he got a little front end heavy and rode that out but he almost threw that away there i it, it almost got to where it was like 100 percent agree like that um that wheel tap was costing you more time because you couldn't do it consistent you know so you'd have to do it for the 15 laps consistent to actually make it worth something because if you mess it up once you're kind of off the track. Oh, something like that. It's, just, it's definitely the more fun line. And I guess if you're doing that around there, maybe that makes it uh, a little more enjoyable each lap. But the consistency of doing that, it's like it, it's hard to match those technical lines versus the tried and true, just the nice floater double out of there. I, I agree. I thought it was just, I was cringing. My butthole was puckering every time I saw somebody go for it. <laughs> As a fan, it was fun to watch, though. Like I, I like seeing them do that. It, it made it enjoyable because you don't know if somebody's going to eat shit right there. Oh, yeah. In or, a real-world example, like uh, we were out riding today, and we were going up this log, and it was so slick, so technical, and we'd get up over it, and sometimes we'd stop and like get stuck, hung up on it, and have to push our bikes up over. Well, I was out riding today. I wanted to clean it. I wanted to keep my feet on the pegs. If I was in a race, if I got stuck like that, I mean, you know I'd be getting off the bike, pushing that thing, and just yeah. booking it up the rest of the Speaking hill. Speaking of that, though, how about Tim straight Graham Jarvis? Oh, that my gosh. We, yeah. Guy was out riding with us. And the uh, so the way the obstacle works is there's a smaller log, probably four inches in diameter. You, you're going up a hill. You hit that. And then it's a big, about three, four-foot double log. So a big, I don't know, eight-inch and then a almost a a 10 inch in diameter log stacked up next to each other. Well, the guy came from the side and hit the first log and gapped about 10 feet from that log over the double logs. It was unreal. Like, Wait a minute. Are we talking about Enduro Cross or Super Cross? Because I think we're getting off topic. I we're mean, getting these off guys topic, are out in the woods. They're I mean, riding dirt woods. We're walk. woods guys, you know. Jake right. had his method. I okay. decided to and chime you, in. I, I have to say, um, sorry, this is probably going to offend most of you. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, not sorry. Maybe it's because I just suck at the whole enduro cross thing. But um, I did one enduro cross, and my wife said it was the most unsexy thing she ever saw me do on the dirt bike. <laughs> we don't race. We don't <laughs> race. Enduro not cross coming enduro to another cross. race. No, I don't blame you. Enduro cross does not look fun. It just looks like sketchy, freaking motocross death cross yeah and i don't even know how people the, the guys that. that are good at it, it's fun to watch 
Oh, yeah. No. But but Brian and I sat down the other night and watched like a 20-minute video of all the bloopers or whatever, crashes basically from an Enduro Cross event. And that was probably more fun than watching the actual oh, like race. Footage. Just watch our boy Wild Wally. Wild Wally Palmer. He, he goes big at this. Wally things. will do some stuff. All right, let's jump into the 450 oh, class. Oh, yeah. Um, dude, top to bottom, almost top to bottom. We'll, we'll go top 20. No disrespect. Actually, we get, all right, whatever. We'll go top 22. Alex Ray, I'll give a little respect there. You got Hart Rath in 21st, uh, Seven Deuce, Deuce in 20th. When you go back to 22nd with a lineup like that, and by the way, everybody else in front of them is a much bigger name. It's been a long time since I've seen a 450 lineup that looked like that. Dude, it with was With that many names legit. in there. Legit. Legit riders. And everybody knew this coming into this season that this was going to be probably one of the most stacked seasons. Everybody says that every year, but, like, when you really look at the talent and even more incoming 250 riders like Sexton and Ferrandis, this was easily one of the most stacked you, years. You know what else everybody knew? Freezy would be involved in an incident during the race. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. When we were watching that, we thought that – Freezy caused that. No, he, he, well, just by default, it's yeah, Freezy. Yeah, exactly, but Tomac so, ran it in on him. To jump in on that stacked lineup, just this is kind of off topic, but these guys are out there for a lot longer. They have a lot longer careers now. I mean, Justin Brayton is late 30s, and, I mean, he's got factories. You know, he's got Honda support, and it's like these guys' careers are starting to extend, so are we getting an oversaturation of, Talent? I don't want to call it an oversaturation. Maybe a saturation. It. I love it. But Keep it coming. If you got guys, I, yeah, I, I don't. Go ahead, Johnny. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. I, 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 I plugged my camp on a long time ago. Um, <laughs> by the time I was twenty-seven, yeah, I had some certain things happen to me. But I can't believe that these guys. Tomac is getting close to thirty. Marvin is right there at thirty. Roxon is twenty-six, twenty-seven. Malcolm Stewart's got to be high 20s, Barsh is high 20s, uh, Dylan is middle 20s, um, Webb is middle 20s, Brayton is old, Freeze is old, Martin Davalos is old, Tickle's old, um, Bogle's getting there. Like, dude, most of these guys, Anderson is up there, Osborne is an old man. I, it, it, It's gnarly that these guys have gone this long and not had something catastrophic I mean, yeah, Roxon and um, but you know Marvin, his little brother getting paralyzed. Like I, I am, I am blown away that these guys are um, in their thirties still willing to put it all on the line. Yeah, and you know it's only getting sketchier. It's not going to get any better, you know. Yeah, with the bikes and the tracks, it's. I, I was going to say I picked up a carton of milk Mark. earlier today, and on the side of it was Blake Baggett's face. <laughs> because he's missing right now. Has anyone seen Blake Baggett? Uh, I keep hearing the rumors oh, about legal uh, legal shit. But Johnny, have you seen Blake Baggett? Yeah, you, I, you live out closer to him than than we do. Um, I I've got some info, but uh, there's <laughs> it. It just it's a it's a small world, and um, I completely understand where Baggett's coming from with with this stuff. And you know, I I hope uh, Joey Savasi. Actually, you know, um, enjoys his, his semi factory ride. So uh, we can we can kind of leave it at that. Um, I, I wish more news outlets would actually freaking say what the heck is going on, and not have people like that's what journalism is supposed to be. Is you're supposed to actually report the news, um, but everyone wants to just say, oh, there's there's something there. There's a disagreement. It's like, yeah, of course there's a disagreement. I mean. Uh, there's writing on the wall. You can pretty much put two and two together as far as what happened to Bag is. So. Yeah, I would have. I mean, if you throw him in that lineup, it's even more stacked. Oh, yeah. Alex Ray's probably left out. You know, no offense, but no, you're, you know that that would have been actually he'd qualified. Yeah, he did qualify twenty. Yeah, twenty second. So Baggett would have definitely been in there. Um. So we all, you know, bef- literally right before the gate dropped, all called our picks. At this table, Noah was the only one that was wrong. He called Cooper Webb. Uh, the the other three, you know, including me sitting here at the table, called Bam Bam. We were right. Yeah. Yeah, um, I said Roxon. I, I thought Roxon was going to win. He but, was a close um, second for I me. Was, I can I agree wrong. with you on that. 
Yeah, but he was close, man. He really was. Brian, who'd you, who'd you have before the before the gate dropped, or did you even think to pick somebody? Are we only talking about the first race? The I main the, event. I no, had the two uh, people that were up there first. No, nah, we're just talking about main event 450. Okay. I had them there, but I think the more surprise for me was um, obviously Webb and, and uh, Tomac. You know, they had their drama or maybe not the best start, but I was more surprised that they were kind of just left in no man land, not really gaining a, a half a second or a second there and here to the 10th to uh, 8th place people. I thought that was more surprising than who won. It's hard with this opening round. I thought it was surprising to see Osborne. Oh, yeah. Osborne totally. I mean, I wasn't too surprised with Carmack. I, I had a feeling that something was That's probably going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, think he'd be the Osborne. Best Sorry, I've, I've got nicknames for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I Osborne like it. was top qualifier in his heat. He was second qualifier overall. So to go out there and end up finishing tenth, like we went through it right before this podcast started. It was like, if you look down through the top and you start at number one and go back, who is the first one that's disappointed? And I picked out Webb. You know, finishing ninth. Like Easily. I got to think, Plessinger's Easily. happy with eighth. Dylan's first race, he's in the top 10. Brayton's obviously ecstatic at sixth. Mookie's got to be happy Mookie. with fifth. You know, Sansarillo, he didn't throw so, it away so. first race. So, fourth so. Place. he's probably all right. You know, 10. Marvin's not going to get beaten by his wife back at the camper tonight. <laughs> he finished on the podium. By the way, I'd like to throw out, Marvin has Montana plates. So, if the IRS is listening, Montana plates on Marvin's uh, RV. Just throwing that out there. And obviously, Roxon and, and Barsha are happy. So you get back to eighth, and you're like, Cooper Webb, like champ coming, you know, just a little over a year ago. Eighth place? And ninth. Then, and, ninth oh, I'm place. sorry, ninth well, place. Yeah. And then Osborne, he qualified 10th. 13th. Yeah, I mean. He qualified 13th. Yeah, those guys have to be disappointed. I mean, KTM overall has to be happy. I don't know if we're ruining the surprise. Gas Gas is owned by KTM. But. What? Yeah, I mean, and they got two, no way. two on the podium. But they've got their motocross champ back out of, uh, you know, barely in 10th. They got their former supercross champ in 9th. Dino's what he is. I mean, I, I thought I'd see a little bit more tonight, but uh, that's... <laughs> I can promise you DeCoster, I don't care about Barca winning. He ain't happy. Well, Anderson, he's back in 15th. He don't give a shit. He's on that Team Fried program. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you say that, but it's be, I, I think he'll be on the podium this year. But at the same time, like, you know, if he's not doing good, he just kind of rides around. Am I am I wrong? Does anybody else like have an no, argument no, for that? I can't right can't that. argue with that. Oh, I kind of want to talk about how what web web um, but uh, it. It's just kind of sad because he was he, your pick. I you know, said he, he was no, going to win the main event. My, yeah, it was my pick, and uh, he just he was he wasn't even showing anything out there. And I honestly expected a, a lot more, like maybe a podium from him. Did you not see that in the heat race? Though you didn't see him just kind of like just staying in the same rhythm. Like he didn't look like he was gapping the guys. Osborne and Plessinger were all over him. Eventually, Osborne caught him. Like that was kind of my. Like take I think that's kind of his mo, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he I wouldn't disagree. He with doesn't that. seem like the type of guy. I I've never considered Webb. Webb has a factory KTM ride because of his racecraft and because of his headspace, not because he's the guy that will set the world on fire. Those are guys like uh, Tomac and AC that you know you give them some super juice in the morning and they'll be able to make it happen. Um, Webb is that consistent guy that he just needs to get a good start. And if he gets a good start, he can kind of block his way around, cross jump people, just make it really, really hard to pass um, to do the kind of Michael Rocco thing where you, nobody's going to get by you kind of thing. He is not the guy that is going to charge, charge through the pack. So once I saw him get a bad start, it was, um, you know, besides like the last, uh, we've seen him do it before, but I, with this stack field, he's going to need to get a consistent, consistent start to do it. Uh, Rockson was super surprising um, that he doesn't have Epstein Barr or any sort of flu or any major excuse this year. He was strong the whole 20, 
um, 20 laps and was able to kind of come through the pack and uh, almost put Bam Bam on the ground, but I don't think he wanted to have Bam Bam be a, uh, a target against him, an enemy. So. Well, there was a little bit of, it got close, right? And then Roxton dropped back a little bit. I'm like, oh, this is remnants of last year. Like he's dropping. And the next thing you know, it's like he's right there again. So he definitely had the stamina. I thought that was cool to see that uh, he didn't give up. He was like, this isn't last year. I'm ready to go this year. Yeah, I we, agreed. We, we, agreed. We were watching that during the race. And, you know, I think we all came to the agreement that if he can get by cleanly, he's going to make the pass. Otherwise it's not worth the risk because, you know, it's a, it's a long season. So, and it's the first race. I'm impressed that, sorry, Mario, that everyone gave Roxon such a hard time saying that he's not going to be able to do shit this year because of his injury and he's on a totally new bike. They had to change everything. So it's going to take him, you know, the whole season to figure that bike out. Well, I'm pretty sure that's shut everybody up after this performance. Now, I think I think a, a thing that I always wonder about, and maybe Hopper, you have some good insight to this. So, is Roxton up there going, okay, it's, it's Barsha, and no disrespect to Barsha, but normally he doesn't stick around for the length of the championship. And is he seeing Tomac and, um, you know, the rest of the competitors, Super Web back in the back, and he's like, oh, okay, like, this is good enough? Or is he not even worried about that? He's like, Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think you hit it. Him making 23 points, he's like, I'll lose three points all day a week to to somebody like Barsha because, you know, he, he'll do this first, then 15th kind of a deal. Um, so Barsha or um, Roxon just needs to do the dungy thing and just be up there all the time. And in a season like this where where you have 15 guys that could win, I mean – Every weekend, you could it's a crab shoot to see who's going to win. So just being up top five, I think you're going to get it done. For those guys... But that, sorry, guys, go for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no problem, man. Uh, for those guys that ended up in the top five tonight, at this point forward, I don't think the goal should immediately be to, all right, I'm going to win every race. It's I'm going to stay in this top five and just keep consistent because... A couple years back when Anderson won his championship, that was what he did. He just kept picking them off one by one and stayed consistent. And yeah, there can be arguments made that with his championship, he got lucky. There were a few people out with uh, bike issues and injuries, but Roxon, he rode well tonight. And I think with the new bike, um, Johnny was, I think it was Johnny that was making some points about that. They might not be totally settled into that bike. Um, I saw what I was noticing was a couple times when he could have gone for the pass on Barsha. Um, he was a little sluggish out of the corners. And I, out of my personal experience, that KTM is a pretty sh- sharp turning bike. It's it's really precise. And I think Barsha might have just, yeah, it, it might have just been able to ra- launch out of those corners a little bit earlier than uh, Roxon was. So maybe if you set up uh, things here and there, but. Uh, with a lot of the riders, I, I think the setups, they might have still been a little bit of testing because, as we all know, the best place to test is at a race. It's under race conditions. So you might see a few different changes, um, especially being on the same dirt on uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, a lot of the guys might come out a little bit stronger, be a little more comfortable on the bike. Um, and Roxon being one of those, I, I, I think if they, they can get that bike set up a little better where he can whip out of the corners, maybe – who knows? I mean, he could be loving it right now. But I think well, Roxon's in a good spot because there's people that were in the top five. And to be fair, like the riders that got some of the riders that got the top five this weekend, they got there because I'm not saying it's luck, but they're not going to be consistently in the top five every week. I think Roxon's got to be in a good spot going, hey, I got a lot of riders that are going to be inconsistent in between me and the consistent championship contenders. Yeah, I mean, if you look well, at one, it, isn't sorry, John. I was going to say, if you look at sorry, it, go for you know, it j- just to go with the top five, you've got Sansarillo, who's been known to be inconsistent, though extremely fast when he wants to be. We've never really seen Malcolm with full factory support, so I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt right now and and see what happens moving forward. 
Marvin's always been a contender, but never really, a, in my opinion, a true contender for a championship. He's always been a top three guy. And then Barsha, well, Barsha always wins the first round of the season. So we got to see what he can do in the second round and every round after that. So I think to your point, Brian, you're right. Roxon's been a known championship contender. And, you know, the other guys were that you'd think he'd be contending with the championship with being, uh, I guess, three of the former champs plus the motocross champ. They were on back in the pack tonight. So, you know, when he's going back to his motor home tonight, he's got to be feeling pretty good about things. Something to consider with uh, – Malcolm is didn't doesn't he still have a 250 championship under his belt right he does yeah and after that that was he was one of the only ones that couldn't find factory support um in recent years from being a 250 champ and that's that does say something having that championship to your name it, 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 it but I don't think he has any 450 podium yeah, let's wow. call it what it is. Yeah. No one's picking him in to be the championship. Contender. Not at all, but like he maybe will you're be. picking him in your top five. He's going to be better. You're not yeah, picking sure, him easily. In not in the, the number one spot, but in a a stronger contender this year for uh, up front. And to be fair, he did beat all of his Yamaha teammates tonight. And oh, I think he'll be a podium guy. All those Yamahas are cursed in the 450. Yeah, they they are. Yeah. If they put the 250s out there, they'd probably have the first one. Well, I'd have to Dude, I, I think the 250s might even have better lap time. That's what I was just going to say. I, the track do change. I, I'd have to go take a look at the lap times because you might actually be right on that. So, Craig was the fastest guy of everybody, oh. at least in qualifying. Craig was a half a second faster than Chase Sexton for qualifying. But Oh, was he really? Did you guys see Zach Osborne crash? Oh, yeah. On yeah. press day. Oh, it, yeah. It was press day when he crashed. Are we so, talking about practice? Practice? <laughs> first lap of press day. <laughs> yeah. Literally first lap of press day. So Over I, the bars. I, I want to do a quick round table with everybody, and I'll just call you guys out one at a time. I want to know your biggest surprise of the night, and it could be 250 class or 450 class. Just just tell me who you're, you are most surprised with, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. So I'll start across the table from you, Jake. Who's your biggest surprise? Oh gosh, um, the biggest surprise. I mean, I, I what comes to mind is the least the least surprise is Barsha. He looked the best. Um, I I knew that I, I had seen videos of him out there riding that gas gas, and I knew he was going to be strong. Um, for me, I I didn't really think uh, I didn't really Christian Craig wasn't coming to mind. Like I. I'm not in on these. I don't listen to the motocross podcast that often. Um, and I don't hear like those guys speculations. And for me, I, just because in the past Christian Craig has never been that guy. Um, and I, I don't really do a whole lot of uh, following of the riders. He was surprising for me. He, he came out swinging and I, I wasn't expecting that. I, I was just ready to see the ordinary Christian Craig out there. All right, Luke, biggest surprise of the night. Uh, mine's actually pretty simple. It's just Justin Brayton getting sixth in that stacked of a field. Like I know he's a good rider, you no, know. Like I'm, there's sure. no lie about that for sure. But the fact, you know, he's the oldest guy in the field. He's 36, almost 37, or something crazy. And just for him to, I can ride a, at 90 percent and be that good. Just to have a solid sixth place with that stacked of a field, that's impressive. No, uh, that's a good pick. Noah, biggest surprise of the night. Um, honestly, I think my biggest surprise is Buki just getting a top five, in uh, all honesty, because, uh, Tomac, he always, it's always a win or a dead last, so. 13th tonight, though. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think Buki. Okay. Uh, Johnny, biggest surprise of the night? The KTM Junior, all electric motorcycle. <laughs> I, uh, we, no, we, um, we it saw would, it that, would have to be Osborne. Okay. It'd have to be Osborne. As a future moto dad, you got to love that. The top end, no plus rebuild. Dude, as somebody that uh, has been super spoiled, that has no mechanical skills whatsoever, <laughs> uh, I am I am super stoked for that. Like, less moving pieces, the better. You act like you do that stuff anyways, Brian. Yeah. 
So, Brian, biggest surprise of the night? I'm going to call it the, the Webb born. I was more shocked that Osborne and Webb didn't move to the pack even after some of their challenges. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. I'm also going to go with Johnny. Zach Osborne's the one that surprised me the most, just barely finishing in the top ten. One, coming off a motocross championship, and two – it wasn't that long ago that he won the last Supercross championship, or not last Supercross championship, but last Supercross race of the season. I'm not saying I expected him to win, but I he really thought he was sleeping on the gate, and, and that's what started it. He shouldn't been in the back of the pack on the gate, and then he crashed. I'm going to do one more roundtable question for everybody. Who are you picking for the next race? So keep in mind, we're running the same track. I don't know if they're changing the layout or not. I haven't looked into it. Uh, but we're going to be back in Houston later this week, and then obviously we'll be back again next Saturday. Uh, after everybody's had a chance to sort out their bikes, see what the competition has, I'm only going to ask for 450. Not that I don't care about 250. I just don't care about it as much. So, Jake, who are you taking well, 450? Well, we know it's going to be Craig, so. Yeah, I mean, I think Craig's 250. Odds on favorite. But 450, Jake, who you got? Well, I'm teetering between two people. I, I think Tomac might come out strong. He might have had a little bit of pressure on him today. I mean, that number one plate, it, it carries a load more than uh, more than I think a lot of us realize. And so if he gets himself sorted out, he might be un, un, untouchable. But I want to see Roxon do well. I think if they get a few things sorted out on the bike or sorted out in headspace, he proved that he had the speed tonight. He made it within a pretty short gap of Justin Barsha. He just couldn't close the move. Um, so I, I'm going to call Roxon. And also, I would like to point out, Jake said before the race, I'd like to see Justin Barsha win because I want to see an all-red bike next week. Red number plates, red plastic, red frame. Oh, and you're going to so get to see it. So, Luke, who you got 450 next race? Um, well, this is what I was going to mention at some point. Now nah, I got the mic. I... I think everybody can agree with me. It's really hard to take away a lot from the first round because it's such a long season. I know that's very cliche, but I think everybody can agree with that. So, I mean, obviously, I think Barsha and Roxon made, like, a really big splash tonight, like, with how good they were both riding today. I mean, they were, they were the only ones doing that quad. I mean, like, they looked pretty much even all day, like, at least in the racing side between the heat race and the main event. Um, I think Zacho is going to back bounce back. I don't know if he's going to win, but I think he's going to bounce back big on uh, the next one for sure. So Fair. he's probably going to be my pick. Fair enough. No, who you got? Um, so I'm kind of going back and forth between, I mean, I know, uh, uh, Osborne and Webb, cause obviously they both have to be super pissed that they, they didn't get a very good start. And this is the way I let my 11 year old speak. Go ahead. <laughs> and, uh, no, I mean, it's the first race back. Uh, everyone's still kind of com- coming back out into uh, racing. And, uh, yeah, maybe uh, Weber Osborne, I might want to have a step. He'll try. Okay. And to be fair, I did say this is after hours, so you can say whatever you want. Uh, Johnny, who you got? 450 next or er, next race. Not next week, next race. All right. I want to say Tomac because he's always so hot and cold. But I really feel like last year was the only championship Tomac was going to win. Um, that's probably going to rub people some wrong way. But I think he's going to bounce back. I think he's going to be on the podium. But I don't think he's going to win the year. I think Barsha, he basically got two whole shots and a heat race and one the first race here not to mention you know he won a1 so he's already got two races under his belt this year yeah, i think he's gonna win the next one yeah yeah he he confused a lot of people by winning a1 i i actually had some friends uh that were confused by that but all right uh brian who you got 450 next race so i'm going completely opposite so i think taking Barsha, alex ray gonna... alex ray to, for yeah. the win <laughs> yeah for the win no i think Barsha's going to be slightly off the podium, and uh, even though he's got the bike dialed in, I just feel like kind of the, the hit or miss. And I, I think Tomac's going to come back on fire, and then I think the next round he'll be 
back having problems. So I, I'm going with Tomac for the next round. If this was a week in between, I don't know that I'd disagree with you, Brian. And I and I think I don't think Tomac's gonna come out and finish thirteenth again. But because we've only got a few days in between, Barsha looked really good on that bike. So I, I'm gonna go with Johnny's pick on that and say Barsha's gonna back this up. I don't know what's gonna happen next Saturday. Yeah. Well, but, I just think our the top title contenders have to they have to at least give something, right? So we got Osborne, we got Tomac, we got Webb. They have to do they have to be on the podium the next round. And maybe Hopper, he's got way more race experience. He disagrees, but you got to come back and show at least some. No, I, I agree. I think those guys both are going to do well. I just don't think they're going to win. They're definitely going to do better than their ninth and 13th or whatever they got. Um, I say those guys are going to be inside the top five, but uh, sorry, this is your pick, not mine. Yeah. Yep. And, I, and, yep. I, and I mean, top five is going to be good for the championship at this point. I mean, we're doing these three round things with the exception of Florida where we're doing two in Orlando and one in Daytona. Uh, as a, as a fan, I love it because I can watch Supercross three times within an eight day period. I think it's great. I don't know how the riders feel about it. And we're not going to get into that tonight because we're already running up on an hour at this but point. But it's on Peacock. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it took me a long time to figure out that app on my Apple TV tonight. I ain't going to lie. We, met, we missed a heat race. <laughs> I'm watching it on my phone. You don't want to do it. We need to turn. I started at 8 a.m. this morning. Like That's a whole other podcast in itself and probably a YouTube video on how to screen Supercross. I, I should have just uh, screen wow. captured my uh, my FaceTime videos with you trying to figure that out earlier today. So, Listen, uh, I'm going to go around Again, the table. That's a problem. <laughs> Sorry, Johnny. Go ahead. No, no, no. I'm the, guys. I, I I like to hear myself talk, so go for it, Mario. No, so I'm just going to go around the table one more time. Give you each just you know, uh, thirty seconds. Anything else you want to say? If you don't want to say anything, you just pass on to the next person. So, Jake, anything else tonight? No, it was an exciting first race, but I'm going to say the cliche thing: it's a long season, and there's a lot, a lot ahead of us. That's true, Luke. Not taking anything much out of the first round. A few minor things. But I'm so fucking pumped that Supercross is back. Let's go. Now, no, just because you heard Luke use that language doesn't mean you get to use it next. But I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Anything else you want to add? Um, just congrats to Boisha. All right. Johnny, anything else you want to add? I'm just super pumped that Feld Motorsports didn't use cardboard cutouts for actual fans like the... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's, that's a great take on that. I love it. So, so we can we go back just really touch on that very briefly. I know you're only giving thirty seconds. The crowd cheering was so loud. Was that real? Did you ever notice that? You can never. Uh, we we did hear noise on it. Um, you know, ten thousand people, actual people, are a lot louder than you know five hundred cardboard people. So maybe that's what it was. I'm yeah. not real sure. <laughs> Yeah. And and what about Barsha almost lapping Tomac? Dude, that we, had to I pointed that out. You, Dude, I was shot. curious for that he more was, at the end, wondering if that would happen. He was going one hair, hand in the air, and the red plate was like only a few feet ahead of him crossing the finish, like yeah. in the air still at the same time as Barsha. That's a good That's a good call right there. Yeah. All right, Brian, you, you, get, you already stepped on Johnny's few, so I'll give you like 10, 20 seconds at this point. Well, that, that's fine. I'm going to turn this in then to the criticism and, and hop on Hopper when, when he kind of calls what it really is. I was very disappointed in Pika and trying to find. I'm a fan of the sport. It it calls me many hours to figure out how to watch the sport, and I think that's bad. The sport trying to bring in people that aren't diehard. So uh, that's totally outside of the racing. But I was kind of disappointed in the challenges there to watch the race. No, I agree. This isn't arena cross. This is a uh, super cross. We want to bring in people that aren't moto. Like we just want to bring in random people and get the sport to grow. And I, I thought that's a barrier to entry. I couldn't even find it. We were pulling it up on the app while we were uh, on our way up to Mario's house. I couldn't even find it on the app. I ended up somehow on San Diego of 2020. So I ended up, so we went into the Apple TV and the NBC Sports Gold app is on my Apple TV and we were allowed to watch it for 10 minutes before it timed out. 
So why is it still available on an app? It's not available on anymore. That makes no sense. So I'll agree with you guys on that. I'll give Supercross a little bit of credit. They did send an email out today about how to watch it. If they could have sent some instructions on how to get into it, that would have been nice. Um, but, but see, how did you get on that email list? Is the, is the, the thing. Exactly. I, You're not pulling on random, that email list. I, I didn't piss it. Listen, never ridden dirt bike. I, I didn't piss everybody off like you did, Hopper. They already deleted you from all those email lists. <laughs> Dude, they did. I, I nobody responds to me for a press pass. So <laughs> when I go to a supercross, I'm gonna have to. Hey, I'm gonna have to. Two wheeled rider, yeah. Hopper, just you, just just tell him you work for two wheeled rider. You get one that way. I'll, I'll claim you. Give, right, give my right. email address. I'll tell him you cool. work for me. We'll get we'll get you in. So. No, I mean, what, yeah, I appreciate it, Mario. No, no problem. I will take care of you. Um, no, you know what? Some of you guys said, like, it, it was just fun to be back to racing tonight. I know it's a little bit different, but it seems like we're a little bit back to normal. Obviously, we pick states and locations where we can have fans, albeit limited. I, I enjoyed this one way more than I did the last. What, what do we do? Like thirty-seven rounds in Salt Lake City or whatever to end the season. Yeah, this, this was much more enjoyable to watch. I'm happy it's back. I look forward to the next round. And, uh, no, I, I had a good time tonight. So. Mario. Yeah. Did you notice that the 30-second girls had more covering on their face than actual clothes on their body? We, we called that out that. during the race, too. That was – um. I, I'm trying to – you know, Daniel Blair's out there in the middle of the track with no one around him other than the camera guy wearing a mask. I – listen, I – I, I don't want to get into that, but I, I think a lot of it is done. Different, different. Yeah, I think a lot of it is done for uh, what? What did you guys say? Symbolic, symbolic or, yeah. for symbolic reasons. And and listen, I don't know what they've had to sign over for these states and these locations they're in. Potentially, they have some contract obligations they have to fulfill and say they have to be seen with masks on while they're on TV. At the same time, I saw Carmichael and the other guys sitting a few feet apart. The no riders, mass. the riders, when they come off the track, they're going up to a microphone surrounded by more people. So it's, it feels weird. I don't, it seems like it's a bit, a bit vague. Motorcycles cause COVID. Yeah, apparently. I think, I thought. That's it, just it, because they're, I have heard, they're on four strokes, not two strokes. Well, that's what I was going to say. I've heard the rumor. If you're riding a two stroke, COVID can't happen. That's what I heard. Aww. It's a good thing they finished the race before 10 o'clock, though, tonight. <laughs> Maybe that's why they moved the start time up. <laughs> yeah. The curfew. All right, listen, I and, and I'll stay on with you guys here for just a minute after we sign off, but I appreciate everyone's time tonight. We've gone for just about an hour after I actually hit the record button. Appreciate you guys coming over tonight, watching the race. That so was, much fun. Yeah, I mean, that, that was a blast. I'm not saying, listen, these After Hours podcasts have always been like a special thing that we do on top of the regular podcast. I'd love to do more of these. Hopper, hopefully, I'm not going to make you do it for all 18 rounds or anything, but you're available to talk shop after a race, and we got some guys in here. I'd love to have you back on. Brian, you know where the studio is. Hopefully, you can find your way back over here. I'm sitting in your chair right now, Brian. It's very comfortable. <laughs> oh, and, and Jake's usually yeah, how, how good does that feel? Oh, I, lo I love it. Just, New co-host coming you're, in hot. You're, you're going to have to sanitize your mic next time you're over here. Jake's been licking it all night. So. Yeah. All right, listen, guys, really appreciate it. Hope you guys listening to the podcast enjoyed it. Oh, sorry, Johnny. I didn't mean to chop you off. This is what happens when we're doing it via phone because th there's no nonverbals. Johnny, I'll, I'll give you the last couple of seconds here to talk. You were nice enough to be a guest tonight. Go ahead. Floor's yours. No, no. I, I, honestly, I was plugging in my iPad, so I might have just been louder than oh. before. But it, it's nice to know that your house is more locked down than the Capitol building, <laughs> so nobody can get in there. <laughs> <laughs> and and that I did, <laughs> I did have some guy running through here with no shirt on and a dead uh, a dead raccoon on his head earlier, but he he found his own way out. So word, word on the street is someone opened the back door though for him. Yeah, it's that's 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 what. Yeah, I they, there's all sorts of stuff going on uh, <laughs> on the internet. I'm sorry, I'm gonna get your podcast removed. That's all right. We'll <laughs> we'll, we'll be fine. It's all fun. So listen, uh, hope you guys enjoyed tonight's podcast. If you did, and you're listening to it on your favorite podcast platform. Uh, and you're not going to give it a five-star rating, just keep in mind, this was an after hours. There's no script. There's no rules. So if you didn't enjoy this one, maybe go listen to a regular, like, more PG-rated two-wheeled rider podcast.
And if you still don't want to give it a five-star rating, then just stop listening to us and don't give us a rating at all. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, uh, I'm going to link Johnny Hopper down in the uh, description below so you can check out his channel. Uh, he's always putting up Supercross, Motocross videos. Uh, I'll link these guys sitting across the table from me. Uh, obviously, Brian's always linked in there. Also on Facebook, I'll link that. We do have a uh, 2WR podcast forum where you can go on and leave questions, comments, anything you want to do. Obviously, you can check out 2WRpodcast.com or send us an email at 2WRpodcast at gmail.com. So once again, I am your host, Mario Orsini. Brian does not get to sign off tonight because he's not in studio, and we will talk to you guys again soon.